And we are live. Good morning, Crypto Warriors, and welcome back to the Gem in the Crypto, episode 500. There we go. <laughs> of course, we are here today for our 500th show. I am King, one of your hosts, along with Bitcoin Zay, and of course, Shannon Allen from Crypticoin, where, of course, we're here to bridge the gap between the community and crypto. We'll be covering some uh, a few of the stories from last time. We talked about crypto-friendly Silvergate Bank goes public on New York Stock Exchange. Russia new law will let police confiscate Bitcoin from 2021. And of course, Tron founder Justin Sun admits investment in crypto exchange Poloniex. I uh, did want to give everybody a heads up. The reason why uh, we had to redo episode 500, the computer was going into overload. We know we didn't have uh, enough computing power to get all three of us on in different parts of the world. So we wanted to make sure we gave you all a good show, so we're going to pre-record it and uh, release this, and then we'll be back to our daily shows after that. But before we start, of course, let's go ahead and check out these prices right now in uh, crypto land. Of course, Bitcoin is coming in at a lower price than where we were at last week, $8,759, but it's still up 0.29% on the 24-hour clock. Ethereum's at $188, up 1.57%. Litecoin is at $60, down 0.4%. XRP Ripple is up 0.9% at $0.27, cent and Bcash is down 0.74% at $285. Uh, nothing new here. Again, the price is still higher than what it was this time a couple years ago uh, in 2017. And, you know, it's just continued that volatile trend from that $8,000 to $10,000 to 11000 range. So uh, nothing new here. Anything I'm missing on that Bitcoin, Zay? And of course, we want to make sure we introduce again Shannon Allen. He is the CTO, CIO of Crypticoin, one of our in-house coins we love to give out every day because, of course, it teaches education uh, in the crypto space as well as a privacy coin. So without further ado, I'm going to let Shannon Allen go ahead and give us an introduction about this Crypticoin project we've been ambassadors of and uh, why it's something people should look out for. Well, it's a cryptocurrency that everybody can learn from. That's really the key. So when we got started with this, we made sure that the max supply was based upon humanity. So a lot of people are into the prices of Bitcoin going sky high, up and down, etc. But the layman right now cannot get into Bitcoin. You know, a person out of Vietnam, etc. You know, they don't know. They don't know how to really understand how the markets work. So we provided a platform for people to learn. Uh, get their feet wet, and really get educated on what the future is of cryptocurrency and what money is. So with Crypticoin, we have a whole community that's international. So it's people from all over the world into Crypticoin. And we basically took the key points of Satoshi's white paper and tried to work them our own way so people can really use it as a medium of exchange, but then understand what their rights are with privacy and the whole thought process behind what Satoshi tried to do with the original Bitcoin white paper. So with our platform, we have mobile wallets that are almost done. We have, it's working on Android, but right now we have it on desktop working on Linux, uh, Mac and Unix. People can mine it. We have master nodes, so it's a nice thing to jump in and get your feet wet and learn cryptocurrency. And I remember one of the things you mentioned uh, when we were actually doing a live show, but of course we had to cut that short because it was freezing. One thing you told people was like, hey, this isn't going to reach the price of Bitcoin. That's not what this coin is for, it's to become your next $20,000 coin. Uh, you said, as you just stated, it's to actually use it and to learn about it. Is that correct? Yeah, exactly. You know, anybody can use it from the United States to actually China. So the beautiful part about the way that the privacy coin is set up is I can send from peer to peer and it gets from me to you in less than three seconds. Like I, I've tested with all of you guys. I mean, there's not many coins that transfer from peer to peer as fast as crypto coin. Nice. And what made okay. you want to add the privacy feature to it out front? Just, just outright. I mean... Uh, in the Satoshi white paper, Satoshi always said that 
Bitcoin is not anonymous, it's pseudonymous. And he wrote the best way to be anonymous is to use Tor. So we basically took what he said verbatim and added it to Cryptic Coin. Nice. Oh, yeah. And I want to add, too, uh, the good thing is you can educate yourself with Cryptic Coin without having to go to Coinbase because they have something similar. However, you have to get hooked in with their KYC, AML, to even get it released into your wallet. So I like the fact Cryptic Coin, you learn it, you get the education, and you get the coins without all of the politics in between. Nice. There it is, people. Uh, we'll be talking more about Cryptic Coin in a moment. But, of course, let's go ahead and get to our first story. Again, these are stories from last week we began to cover before we froze out. But they still were very important, so we want to make sure we cover them. Uh, and that first story was giving a shout out to crypto friendly Silvergate Bank, which went public on the New York Stock Exchange. That's right. Silvergate Bank, we've been touting uh, and talking about them now for some years. A crypto friendly bank officially began selling shares on the New York Stock Exchange Thursday. Roughly a year after its first filed its initial public offering, Silvergate began its IPO day on the New York Stock Exchange, according to the Stock Exchange Twitter account. News comes a day after Silvergate received a, quote, notice of effectiveness from the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission, indicating its long-running IPO bid had been accepted. Now, if you heard uh, Silvergate bank from us before, it is because these are the people that Jim and I bank with, the Winklevoss twins. I've done business with them. They've been in the crypto space uh, probably before almost every bank out there. I mean, they really doubled down on it. Uh, and it's pretty cool to see that this is paying off for them, I guess. Um, you know, this was a risky bet for them, especially at the time they did it. Uh, Bitcoin Zay, what's your thoughts on oh, this? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, we've definitely been fans of Silvergate Bank for years now, uh, based out in San Diego. And one of the things that they've been able to do with their uh, IPO listing is the stock is priced at $12 per share. Um, and it's planning to offer 3,333,333 shares of Class A stock, um, and just under one million will be offered directly from Silvergate, uh, while the other two and a half million will be released to shareholders. And what that basically shows is that they have trust in their business model. They don't want to front run it with their own money. And one of the best parts about their banking model is that they accept blockchain companies. They've been able to grow their profits faster than most other banks because they've accepted companies like Gemini. So shout out to Silverbank, them getting listed. Uh, it's way better than we work. Uh, we worked IP on fell apart and uh, burned to the ground. But uh, it looks like Silvergate is going to be a good one. Nice. Uh, Shen, is this something you see happening for more banks? I mean, do you see more banks hopping on this bandwagon sooner rather than later? Or, I mean, it's not even a bandwagon yet when it comes to banks. Do you see them continue to fight back and push this away? I mean, it's an eventual thing. If They have to ride with the evolution. I tell people like crypto is like the evolution of music because, you know, I'm 44 years old. My cousins were listening to music on record players. We were listening to Prince, you know, <laughs> and you went from the record player to the eight track, eight track to the cassette, cassette to the CD. And now you got Spotify. So the music industry had to have its fight with Napster, etc. And I think we're about at that period with cryptocurrency as an analogy. So what do you think about that? Uh, I, I mean, I agree, but my thought would be if banks do really start accepting crypto head on, I mean, my first thing would be, of course, hey, we're going to do this. We're going to start accepting crypto. Let's go ahead and push exchanges out the way because that would be their natural competition. If that were to happen or, um, you know, even if that was, weren't to happen, if they decided to adopt coins and say, hey, on your ledger, on your bank accounts, I know USA already does this. They say you can look at your Bitcoin balance, you can look at your Ethereum balance. I think they might have tried to add Ripple, but it didn't work out. But regardless, do you see banks saying, hey, this bank has cryptic coin that you can check your balance on? This bank has Bitcoin, this bank has that. Uh, do you think it will change that dramatically as well? I mean, with exchanges also, your average person doesn't know how to trade. So, I mean, banking, if they accepted crypto, people will understand they can just park it there and it's safe. Your average person doesn't know how to trade and they don't know how to keep their stuff safe, you know. And even some people that I know that trade didn't even know about Trezor. So we're so early in it, you know, everybody's learning. So if we use cryptocurrency uh, education for everybody, then everybody will be able to feel more safe and no more mis miseducation. And that's funny, we actually scrapped the article uh, but one of the articles we did have from last week was Venezuelan uh, President Maduro holding up the treasure on national TV. 
Of course, uh, he's not a fan of cryptocurrency as much as he is his petrol coin that he's touting. But the fact that he actually held up a treasure uh, for a national audience, I think that says a lot coming from a rural leader, whether you like the guy or not, and what direction we're going. Oh, yeah. And, and I think him holding that up legitimizes it in his country's eyes. But for banks, if banks started using crypto within their, uh, within their platform, uh, like Silvergate, I think it would legitimize crypto so much that people would realize why do we need banks at a certain point, and then it would just basically fall apart from there. So I don't think they'll they'll try and do it, but I think Silvergate is uh, is definitely leading the way with accepting blockchain business because that is definitely a, a, a need in the industry right now. All right, so we got banks involved. Uh, we have national presidents now or dictators, however you look at them involved. Of course, we've seen this from other countries. Uh, it looks like Russia is a new hot one in the news. It looks like Russia has a new law that will let police confiscate Bitcoin from 2021. So we're talking about uh, in less than two years at this point, about a year and a few months. Bitcoin, Zay, what are your thoughts on this? <laughs> well, if you want to make Bitcoin bullish, then tell people you're going to take it in two years and watch everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they literally just put out a signal basically to everybody who owns Bitcoin or who wants to get it. You got a year basically now to buy it and move it off into your own uh, wallet, and then they're going to have a whole new class of holders who, uh, in Russia, if they don't want to move their coin, they don't want them to be able to confiscate it or use it uh, against them. You're going to have a whole bunch of hold holders. I think this is very bullish, actually. Shannon, what's your thoughts on this one? I agree with Bitcoin Zay. I mean, people are going to be having some uh, nice treasure storages in Russia. So when it comes to that, and I know you said it's bullish too, again, it's one of those things where right now the price does not make sense. All the news has been bullish. The technology has been bullish. I know people go crazy about the price all the time, but we say if you actually look at what's going on, uh, not even behind closed doors. I mean, again, this is a transparent open source software. It's go to GitHub or whatever. Uh, you can see it. But uh, why is the price where is that right now? Again, it's higher than it was two years ago, but for people who are expecting this quick bull run, why aren't they seeing any of you guys' thoughts? Oh, yeah. Well, I think, I think you have some institutional money from back coming in, uh, and you can actually see when the volume jumps from there, the price pumps really quickly. However, if that volume isn't there, you see it going sideways. And I think most of the movement is sort of like 2016. It was between 400 and $700 for like eight months. And then, boom, at the end of the year, it went to 1000 and then we saw 2017 where it went to 20 k I think that's what we're seeing now, and I think... It's just a lot of big uh, money people accumulating right now at lower prices. Oils do have a hand in the price. Uh, but as far as the industry, the industry is as bullish as ever. I mean, we have the highest hash rate of all time. We have every single company looking at using Bitcoin. And you have Jack over in Africa right now, over in Ghana, uh, at a random Bitcoin meetup. Trust me, it's a million-dollar CEO is not showing up at a random Bitcoin meetup. This is not going to be the future. So, yeah, I think this is great. And I think Russia has done exactly what we said will happen, King. The uh, countries will eat themselves. They're reactionary. They're not innovative. So they don't know how to build something that people go through. They're just reactionary to it. And that's basically going to put out a uh, signal for people to buy it. What about you, Shannon? I agree totally. I mean, I had a conversation with a, a gentleman out in Hong Kong the other day. And the people have money but they want to get a lot of Bitcoin, but they want to get it at a discount. And they don't realize that you can't really get Bitcoin at a discount at high levels because everybody's trying to get it if it's at a low price or a discount. If anything, people are paying premiums to try and get large amounts and not just make the market go crazy. Mm. And this, Craig uh, trying to get it at a discount. You said, what's that? Craig Wright's trying to get it at a discount. Oh, of course. He's trying to get a big, big, big cut on it. <laughs> Uh, in this publication, quoting Nikita Kulikov, head of a dedicated committee at the Russian parliament, as explaining the constant growth trend in crimes using virtual assets and the lack of consumer protection in the face of this kind of criminal onslaught. The word onslaught was used. That is right. They are writing comic books, Wolverine starring in them. Naturally dictate the need to develop mechanisms for legal regulation and control, control of virtual asset exchange. So, uh... This also sounds like to me the SEC where it's going to be like, basically, if you have a coin that has a CEO, we can come after you. We're going to come after you and try to confiscate a piece of that uh, piece of that pie that everybody wants. Oh, yeah. You know, it's about the money. And it's, it's, in Russia, it's definitely about the money. <laughs> they don't even care about the talking part of it. They're like, oh, yeah, yeah, we definitely going to take that. And Putin's not going to have it as far as the U.S. people uh, trying to buck back against it. So it should be interesting. We got, we got a year. 
So, Shannon, uh, talking to your coin, like a couple things. What's the end goal for crypto coin? I guess if there kind of is one. Uh, and then also, how are how is your team kind of circumventing? You say you know, is all these people using crypto coin in different countries? I know that for a fact as well. I mean, uh, and by the way, please make sure you drop the Telegram and everything so people can join up and, and look into it. But how? Uh, yeah, I mean, how are you all circumventing all these different policies and regulators through all these different nations? I mean, the thing about it is, we did a free coin offering. We didn't do an ICO. Everything is community driven. So the real tip off is it's only a security if it's, it was, you know, a lot of people that are investing and there was a private or a public offering. So what we did is we tried to follow the Bitcoin thought process all the way because initially people don't realize that are new to the game that they gave away Bitcoin in the beginning. So there was a Bitcoin faucet where they were just giving oh, away thousands of Bitcoin. I wish I could have uh, participated man. in that. But I remember that yeah, the Bitcoin faucet that they were doing. And, you know, now somebody give me a, a thousand Bitcoin in a faucet. So <laughs> but we tried to follow that, that whole thing. And even the different nations are speaking about the fact that they can't do anything about Bitcoin because the way it was structured. So in a similar way, we just did everything community based, you know, initial coins were given away for free as people learn things. And again, like our telegram room, uh, our telegram room is cryptic coin VIP. So if you join the cryptic coin VIP, anybody has any questions, they get them answered. And we share a lot of news. I share you guys every time you guys go on. So every, everybody in the community is from all over the place. We got people from, you know, from the Netherlands, people from Singapore, people from Africa, all over the place in the room. So the key is to get everybody to learn. And if we can get everybody to learn and understand together, and if everybody has a mobile app and they can exchange with each other, you can't control that. Like if if you're in LA and Zay's in Singapore, you guys are playing Fortnite and you guys are exchanging Fortnite bucks, there's no jurisdiction with that. So if everybody agrees to use one specific medium of exchange, that's the real key. But I think the missing link, we spoke, we spoke about it on the last call, not really changing the subject, but we got to get women involved. And that's one of the things that we really tried to do with CryptoCoin is, is feature women in blockchain. And, you know, the more women that are involved, we get them to make the medium of exchange work because at these conferences, it's mostly men. And it won't be a true medium of exchange until we can get a lot of women involved. I like the inclusiveness uh, that you're pushing with that as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I definitely agree with you there, Shannon. And I do want to ask you too, Shannon, as far as the privacy aspect of crypto coin, how important do you think privacy will be in the uh, next decade as far as cryptocurrency? I mean, that's the real key. Uh, you know, cashless society is a monitored society. That's what Libra is. And if you can control people and you know exactly what they're buying and how they're buying it, then, you know, if I don't like what Bitcoin Zay said, let me just turn him off, like how they do people on on, uh, on Facebook. Like certain people can say whatever they want to say on Facebook, but then certain other people, many that look like us, can get banned for saying, you know, sharing a Farrakhan video. So, I mean, it's going to be a premium. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So if, if uh, I mean, nobody can monitor if I gave you a hundred dollar bill, but same way, we need to be able to have that happen in a digital form. And that's, I think the original thought process for the peer to peer cashless uh, system white paper that was written, you know, they didn't, I don't think Satoshi saw it as being a uh, digital gold per se. I think it was trying to be a cash kind of system and and to even be fair to satoshi's white paper as well um seeing what i've personally seen the last few years as far as how corrupt officials in the government are acting and how they're abusing their power i mean i don't think satoshi could have envisioned that right because i feel like if he would have he would have made it private to begin with i'm not you know trying to think for the guy or the group of people person or woman whoever but it's one of those things where I, I did not expect governments to react the way they did and to be as blatantly as corrupt as they were. 
Uh, so it's crazy to see how quick that type of behavior has already changed uh, what some people think of cryptocurrency. And then for the end go, if you you know you have one, what is like the cryptic coin end go? I think that one of the real key end goals is to use cryptic coin as a catalyst, kind of like a crypto kindergarten to all of the rest of the space. Perfect. Because nice. like what we spoke about earlier, your average person doesn't know how to trade. Your average person doesn't know how to handle a wallet, and they don't want to feel like, oh, I have. X amount of Bitcoin, I don't want to lose it, and they have that fear. Well, okay, get your training wheels on using cryptic coin, and if we can get the whole world to use it and understand how to use it and use the crypto education base and the the networking that comes with it, then everybody will be able to, uh, you know, understand how to use other coins and and be able to be fearless using this platform as a medium of exchange and using other mediums of exchanges, whether they're using Ethereum or Bitcoin. I have a lot of people in, in our community that have learned with Crypticoin, and now they're damn successful traders. So if you jump into the community, you can ask the people. we got a whole bunch of different nice testimonials where people did not know about cryptocurrency at all, and they came into the community and learned. So at the end of the day, like, like we mentioned earlier, the price of cryptic coin right now, we started as a free coin offering. Okay? So I know if we can get the world to actually learn about crypto cryptic coin and cryptocurrency through what we're doing, hey, the price will go up, but it'll always be affordable based upon the max supply. Nice. Uh, and then, yeah, we, we didn't talk about this time. I know you mentioned it last time. What is that supply? It was uh, when, we, when we first started the coin. Uh, it was like 7.5 billion people on Earth. So we thought to make it so everybody can at least afford to have one, whether you're in you know, some quote-unquote third world country or you're down the street in Miami. You think you all ever burn some of those? So if you ever say, hey, this is too much, or your thoughts on that? I mean, I think with the free coin offering, you know, some random people probably have burned a lot. Uh, you know? That's true. Okay. So it's just had, had <laughs> burned just from people starting. Like, imagine the burn that they have from the Bitcoin faucet. Right. It's crazy. People in dumpsters yeah. right now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It was a guy that I saw on TV trying to get, uh, subpoena uh, um, uh, a landfill to be able to try and find his, his hard drive that got thrown uh, away. He lost 70 million or something like yeah. that? Look, yeah. seventy million. I'm walking up and down the street and, and just grabbing people. Hey, come with me. We got we got a game plan. I got a game plan. So, and of course, I know people are going to want to ask this. I know it's going to come in the comment section. What's the difference between cryptic coin and Monero? What's the difference between cryptic coin and Zcash? What makes besides the educational piece, which I think is very important, where are some other differences there? Okay, so what we did was we took kind of the best of. Uh, Zcash and Dash in a way because we based it upon the zero cash protocol. But Zcash is only proof of work. We have master nodes also, which we call infinity nodes. Uh, and we have proof of work and proof of stake. So if you want to have master nodes, we have master nodes. It costs, it takes 1 million cryptic coin to have a master node. Uh, so we got proof of work and proof of stake. So if somebody wanted to try and 51 attack us, they'd have to 51 attack both the master nodes and the mining, which is a lot. Nice. So which makes it safe. As well as the fact that we have all of these things right out the gates. So we, had, our community helped us develop a desktop wallet, which you can get right now on Mac, Windows, or Linux. And right now we have a... Android app that's on the on the Google Play Store, and the Apple one will probably be done in December. Nice, and I will say, that, uh, you know, speaking of some of those other privacy coins I mentioned, uh, there has been talks that one of them might not actually work here in the next year or two. So 
Uh, we'll see what happens with that and soon to find out. I don't know. It was some scuttlebutt I heard some uh, about, about a year ago. I, I'm not even going to say which one. You know, I don't know what legal uh, consequences come with that. But I was told about a year or so ago that one of them uh, is a big secret and it might not work. Now, their competitor was telling me this. So I don't know how true that is either. Uh, but at the time, the person who was working with the competitors, they, you know, they're technically savvy when it comes to some of this stuff. And what they were being told is that, hey, the other guy's team will not win in the long run. But we'll see what happens, right? <laughs> yeah, well, that's the thing. A lot of these things are going up against each other. Mm -hmm. With CryptoCoin, we want... Everybody wins if everybody learns. That's my thought process. If you know how to work cryptic coin, then you might be able to learn how to accept, uh, you know, Ethereum, etc. And if we can get other people to adopt it on their websites, etc. So we have uh, my crypto checkout. So if somebody has a WordPress site, they can embed my crypto checkout and accept cryptic coin. Many people don't understand how they can accept crypto coin or any other cryptocurrency on their website. But a lot of people have WordPress sites and have no clue that they can accept cryptocurrency right now. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm pulling it up as you speak, too. So uh, when people watch this, they can see it as well. This is pretty cool. Yeah, definitely. My crypto checkout and, and uh, coinpayments.net is all types of ways that people can accept cryptocurrency. And that's what our community is about. Just like how you guys give out news every day. You guys save me from reading a lot of stuff because you guys are always on point giving all of the up-to-date news every day. So my wife and I listen to you guys while I'm sitting there working. It's perfect. <laughs> oh, we appreciate it. And uh, of course, last but not least, Tron founder Justin Sun admits investment in crypto exchange Poloniex. Now, uh, we talked about Justin Sun a lot. We know he's the master of market marketing, so we're not sure if this is true or not, but Tron TRX founder Justin Sun admitted to being one of the investors that recently acquired cryptocurrency exchange Poloniex from financial technology firm Circle. Sun said he was one of the investors who acquired the trading platform in a live stream published by the official Poloniex Twitter profile on November 12th. Furthermore, he noted that the exchange operates independently from his firm, the Tron Foundation. Bitcoin Zay, what are your thoughts on Justin Sun and his uh, another strand of Interesting moves, I guess. Where is he getting all this damn money from? That's, that's what I want to know, too. Hey, what's what happened you make a fake coin? <laughs> hey, man, that's what I'm saying. Uh, it looks like, uh, what's your boy from Alibaba is back in the book, uh, but not Jack Ma. But, yeah, it looks like as though, as though Justin Sun was a master marketer. I will give him that. He's been able to market Tron to the point where he has a whole community of people using a coin that technically doesn't have a use case yet, but they do have a lot of promises. And if he bought Poloniex, which I think, you know, of course, with his admission, uh, is a good move for them. Then Tron will probably be featured on Poloniex. It'll probably have every pair available, Tron and Bitcoin, Ethereum, uh, Tether, and any other stable coin, as well as it's sort of a backup for Tron, meaning uh, if it gets delisted from other exchanges, if they have a stake in Poloniex, at least they always know they can always use Poloniex. So uh, it's good for them. And like I said, he's basically marketed his way to the top, so to say, of altcoins uh, that in my opinion, they don't have a use case yet. So, uh, shout out to them, and if they deal with Poloniex, me as a dumpster fire, but they're basically saving themselves. And, and as you said, Tron is already up 1.46% since it jumped on Poloniex, of course, is that is probably why. And when he say he who's an investor, I wonder if he's an investor like, hey, I put in 10, 15 million, or am I like just a, you know, $100,000 investor, I got a coin coming up, let me put it out there, mm -hmm. who knows? He could have gave him $10 and said, I don't I mean, Shannon, you know, as you know, you're on the C-suite level, you're an executive in the crypto industry. Unlike us, you know, we're just, well, we report news, but we also have other ancillary things in it. But you're actually creating a coin right now. What are your thoughts on Justin Sun and some of the things he's doing, including this buy of Poloniex, or I guess this investment in Poloniex? I mean, Justin has got some long paper behind him. <laughs> like, I've gone to some different uh, events, and I know how much it costs to sponsor on these events and uh, I went to consensus last year and doing that cost a lot of money especially at that hotel and I think the the ticket to get in was over a thousand dollars to get in yeah I think they're like anywhere from like 12 to 1500 I remember yeah yeah so 
she's got some long paper behind her. That's crazy. Uh, so, that, that doesn't want to let everybody know who they are. <laughs> right. The, the, the genius behind them is throwing the money to them. Like, just go do it. We got it. Uh, so with that being said, I want to circle back to Cryptic Coin again. That uh, channel on Telegram is Cryptic Coin VIP, correct, Shannon? Yes, sir. C R Y P T I C two C's or one? Uh, Cryptic Coin C R Y P T I C C O I N V I P. There you go, you're folks. VIP if you come from King of Zay. There you go. That is uh, and that is a Telegram channel again. Join it. There are people all over the world in that channel. There to, I mean, they are there just to answer your questions. Shannon has been doing a great job. Of course, you know we've been ambassadors giving it out as well as much as we can. Uh, Bitcoin say, what else did you have? Oh, yeah. Well, uh, I do want to throw in there that uh, today Google just announced that they are accepting checking accounts. I did just see that right before. I just remember that. So uh, I, did, I just want to throw this in at the end, basically. For people that are looking at the industry and some things we predicted came back in the day, that Google would get involved, Amazon would get involved. Looks like it's happening. And I think with the news that's coming out with Silvergate, doing an IPO, just the sun jumping upon it, all of this news is just an encouragement for everybody to stick with the crypto market, and it should be, uh, it should be a good time this last quarter. And you're right. I've also, uh, for those who know, PayPal is now giving out like debit cards and all types. Of, they're trying to. They're, PayPal's literally turned to bank in the last week. Like in the last seven yeah. to ten days, they turned into a full fledged bank where they're offering all types of account promises for business accounts. Uh, and then I can't remember another one. There was another one out there that's trying to do something similar, offer debit coins and stuff. So as you said, uh, everybody's about to hop on this banking bus and, of course, to gear up for the crypto uh, bus on it. So for the 500 episode, uh, uh, of course, we have to give out some crypto coin. We got Shannon Allen here. Shannon, what is the question of the day for the free crypto coin? Okay, so this was a big one because I won't say specifically, uh, let's, let's just say in January, we're going to be working with some different sports teams. And I'd love to, to know some different sports use cases because we're going to really focus on sports in 2020. Uh, if anybody has those ideas, uh, we'll definitely give a nice amount of cryptic coin to the people that watch this 500th episode. There you go, folks. Give us some uh, good ideas. On some things you might want to see Crypto Coin do with some of the sports teams out there or different type of sports in general, and the winner will get a lump sum of Crypto Coin. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, let's get Crypto Coin curling. Let's get it. Right, exactly. Crypto Coin curling. <laughs> well, well, we'll put a number on it. If, if, uh, if they watch the episode and, and within this week of uh, watching this, we'll give everybody a minimum of. 10,000 crypto coin and a maximum of 100,000. Nice. Now, there you go, people, just to learn about crypto. And Bitcoin Zay, how is the book tour going this, thus far? What city are you running to next? Where you at? What's going on? Oh, yeah. Book tour is going great. Um, because it's a, a little bit of sickness, couldn't make it to New York or get rescheduled. But next week, I will be in D.C., uh, November 21st. Uh, at Howard Bookstore uh, at 4.30 for a book signing. And then after that, I will be heading to Boston. So uh, I'll look out for those details and more coming, more dates coming as well. And of course, uh, stay warm out there. I hear it's another polar vortex. I don't know what they're calling it now. I just saw Detroit's getting like anywhere from 10 to 30 inches of snow. And it's super cold and it's hitting, going down to South Texas. So I know there's a lot going on. Uh, so stay warm out there. And of course, Shannon and I don't have to worry as we're on the tip of each coast in the south, yeah. southeast, southwest tip. It was uh, 90 degrees in here in LA last week, so we're still good to go on that front. I'm sure Shannon enjoying some good heat waves too. So uh, stay oh, yeah. warm, my friend. <laughs> Other than that, it looks like we actually have perfect timing as I see Bitcoin's day starting to freeze. Uh, it happened at the right moment, folks, <laughs> as we're about to wrap this show up. Hey, as always, thank you for watching. Make sure you smash that like and share. Get involved with Crypto Coin, people. This is the reason why we've been ambassadors of it. We've been giving it out. Uh, it's an educational coin. On our show, you can get it for free. If you don't know how to trade, if you don't know how to use your wallets, if you don't uh, know what to do with Bitcoin yet, get the free Crypto Coin from our channel or go to the Crypto Coin VIP Telegram and ask for some. Set those wallets up. Learn to use it. That way, when you do get that Bitcoin bug or it does jump to twenty or $30,000 again, you're not racing to try to figure out how to do everything because you can't.
People found out in 2017. That's why a lot of people from 2017 are still with us now because they realized when they ran to the $20,000 Bitcoin, it was already too late. They didn't know, understand how to trade, how to put a stop loss. You can learn all that with CryptoCoin, so we highly encourage you uh, to just try it out. It's something to do on a Friday, Saturday, Sunday, the weekend while you're relaxing. You can learn everything about cryptocurrency using CryptoCoin. So uh, make sure you check that out. Shannon or Bitcoin's age, do you have anything you want to leave them with? Well, hey, let me go. You guys are awesome. Let me just say that anybody that listens to this channel or that has been listening to the channel, you guys have been spot on on all your news. I would almost say you guys are like the Negro Domuses of crypto. <laughs> so uh, you guys have been predicting all types of stuff. And you guys also help with your layman that is just learning crypto. So you guys are education yourself. And I commend you and I always share you guys and I appreciate you guys tremendously. Much appreciated, Shannon. Appreciate you as well, Shannon. Oh, yeah. Bitcoin Zay, take us out of here. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, everybody, thank you all for watching the 500th episode of The Gentleman of Crypto. Like I said, we'll continue to educate everyone in cryptocurrency. Thank you again, Shannon, uh, for uh, interviewing about CryptoCoin and letting us know uh, how great it is as well. So can't wait to see you all at episode 501. There we go. We'll, we'll, like I said, we'll try to get this uploaded in the next 24 hours, but we'll be back to the regular news cycle. Uh, we're aiming for a thousand episodes next, of course. So that's on the menu. Uh, I don't think we'll be taking a break until then. And also, uh, we're at I think two thousand and like uh, I think we're like seventy followers away from three thousand people. So uh, it was enough people on this channel where we know seventy people. Let's get us up to three thousand. Uh, I hope that is two thousand nine hundred and thirty. It might be two thousand seven hundred, but regardless, we're close to three thousand. Let's make this final push. I'm pretty sure it's two thousand nine hundred and twenty something or thirty something. So. Let's make this final push. Let's get to 3,000 uh, by the time this 500 episode airs. Uh, and then again, we're on to the greener pastures. Other than that, that is the show for today, people. As always, we're here to bridge the gap between community and crypto, Monday through Friday at usually 10-ish, but you know how that goes. And of course, as always, thanks for watching. Make sure you smash that like and share. Shannon, thanks for being here with the Cryptic Coin Project. Of course, Bitcoin Zay, he tells you his dates. Catch him in Boston or D.C., and I'll be honing it down here in L.A. Until next time, folks, as always, cheers and thanks for watching.